This thing needs new rear brakes. But it's pretty cold out right now. I think it's supposed to be 15 or 20 according to the thermometer. Let's see if we can fix that. Well, that actually worked. Uh, so like I said, this thing needed new rear brakes and I had to drive a thousand miles so I thought I'd do it on site. I thought it'd be a fun idea to do this video. Uh, outside because I know a lot of people have to work outside they'd have to work under a shade tree so if you've changed brakes before there's actually a couple things you need to know here and if you haven't then you'll definitely learn something so stay tuned first thing you'll want to do you'll have to turn the ignition on on the push button models you just turn it on twice on the key models you just turn the key to the on position and then you release the parking brake brake loose these lug nuts I've got to use this acorn key, but you can just use this if you have standard lug nuts. With them broke loose and the wheel on the ground still, you're able to take this off, go ahead and put the jack underneath and we'll jack it up. Now we just go ahead and remove the lug nuts. Now let's go ahead and settle into our workspace here. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move this clip. I'm just using a screwdriver. Put your finger over this so it doesn't wanna fly out because it is under tension. Clip is removed. Next up, we're gonna to wanna to remove this bolt right here. This is a 14 millimeter. There's another bolt right here on the bottom. It's also 14 millimeter. Took a little bit of force to break that. Not a lot. I really like these ratcheting wrenches because they really speed things up. Of course, you can do it with a standard 14 millimeter wrench without much issue. Then we're gonna do the bottom one. Now remember, it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. But when you're backwards, you're actually backwards from that. So you're actually, it feels like you're tightening it, but you're doing it right. Let's take this bolt and put it in a secure place that we're not going to lose. So from here, do not let this brake caliper hang. It can actually cause it to leak. But let's go ahead. I want to put a zip tie up there. It's now hanging should be secure it's not actually under tension there I haven't even disconnected this e-brake cable but what we're gonna do can I work with the camera I'd say that's pretty low oh yeah it just started to make noise so since I caught the rotors this early or caught the pads this early I'm not worried about the rotors right now because it hasn't even started to scrape on it the rotors feel good. I'm not even going to resurface them. But that pad was definitely low. For reference, this is 65,000 miles of me driving. Your pads may last longer, but these are the original pads I have on the car. And I have 63, 64,000 miles on it now. So this pad right here, that's how much material is left. Here's a new pad for comparison. This material here is what wears. So, definitely time for it to go. By the way, the brakes I'm using are the Power Stop Evolution. You can use whatever pads you want. These seem like a good price for me, and they seemed low dust. I don't use performance brakes because it's typically not an issue for me. Before we put this pad on, though, this is the thing that's different. This is an electronic parking brake. So we've got to actually retract it. And to retract it, they actually make a wonderful tool for this. I got this off Amazon for less than 20 bucks. I'll link it in the description. But it's a set of different pins that can slide in. And you'll see how it works just in a second. But this seems like a pretty universal kit. So we're now going to want to get this 
caliper off of the pins. I just slid it off. There it goes. There we go. And now this isn't supported by anything. So I've got to yell for somebody to get another zip tie and I'll be right back. All right, much better. In fact, I thought about it as I was grabbing another zip tie and I bet you could just separate the caliper out by hand and only use one zip tie. But that's how I did it. So you all can laugh at me now. So we're gonna have to retract the parking brake. And that is this piece here that spins inside the caliper powered by that little electric motor on the back of the caliper here. So that little kit I showed you had a bunch of different ones of these for different manufacturers. It looks like on at least this kit, it's number seven that works well. But what it does is it slots in into that and then you put the tool on, put this through it, put it down. Make contact, go ahead and do that. And now we should be able, yep. You can see how I'm spinning the caliper. We're gonna go ahead and spin it. Again, it's righty tidy on this. We're gonna go ahead and bottom out that piston. Okay, that was super easy. I've done this before where I just used some needle nose pliers and this is definitely much easier. So please, if you can spare 20 bucks, I do recommend this tool. If you need needle nose pliers, just put them in there and make them work as best you can. With the parking brake bottomed out, we still gotta push this caliper in. I typically open up the brake booster reservoir or the brake fluid reservoir, I should say, uh, before doing this, and I'll just push this shit in with C-clamps, but let's see if I can do it and save a step and not have to open the hood. Oh, wow. That's nice. All right, and then we just push the caliper down until the caliper's bottomed out. So that's actually going to also be my review for this tool that, while not necessary, it certainly makes things nicer, and for less than 20 bucks, if you've got room or an extra 20 bucks or looking for a gift for somebody, I'd say it's worth it. Real quick, I'm gonna put some grease on these surfaces. This kit came with some grease, so that's nice. But these right here, these sliding surfaces, this right here. If you want, you can put uh, brake quiet, but I don't think it's necessary with this backing pad. And then do not get any surface, do not get any grease or anything on this surface. So let's go ahead. It's actually silicone compound not grease I just realized but I imagine it's serving the same function gee how's my uh how do my gloves get black like that I wonder how I keep I do such a good job of keeping them clean all right let's finish this so now that I got grease on the camera, I'm only going to be able to show one of these, but they're both the same. We're going to go ahead and slide both pins in at the same time. All right, got the pins back in. We'll go ahead and rehang it, and then we'll get our. Actually, let's see if I can just do this now while I'm holding it. So the one with the little this extra metal tab here, that's your little warning signal essentially. When the brake gets low, it'll start making noise. That goes towards the piston. Like that. And then we'll go ahead and put the other one in. like that go ahead slide it back on we'll go ahead and get a screw in go ahead and put the 14 millimeter in the top put the one on the bottom back in also before completely tightening 
I put, recommend putting them both in and getting them both threaded. Finally, we take this clip, we go ahead and reinstall it. And we're done with the brakes. Let's go ahead and get that wheel back on. All right, YouTube. One last thing before you run off. It says here to bed the brakes in, and to do that, five aggressive stops from 40 to 10, five moderate stops from 35 to five, and then drive slowly for five minutes. So do that for best brake performance or whatever your manufacturer's specific, uh, specifications say. Until next time, thanks for watching.